everybody, it's me, Napatine. So, first of all, I apologize if I don't quite isolate myself today. <gasps> anyway, we're gonna be playing this game, which is called Black Rose. It sounds pretty. I wonder if there's gonna be any black roses around here. What's this say? Oh, how lovely. The wall is already telling me things. Um, I could barely read it. Where am I going? Am I here on a babysitting job or something? Or am I looking for black roses? I'm not really sure where. Hmm. Hello, you don't seem to have paid your electric bill. All the lights are in, I can't see anything. Where am I going? Oh my, look at this horrendous wallpaper. I wonder who actually was the decorator. Oh great, they've locked the doors. Maybe they're planning on taking over the world this way. <gasps> what if they're locking me up just so they could go ahead with like an ultimate plan where they get all the hedgehogs and all the other things? And literally, you know, all team up, holding the great hero hostage here while they go and take over the world. I'm prowling on about something random. I'll be quiet now. <sighs> what am I even doing in this place? Is Nora and B else here? Hello, is somebody else here? Why are you laughing? Wait, maybe my sister is here. Maybe I should have a look around. The door is locked. It says family room. Okay, so that's the family room. Right, got it. At least I know where everything is. It's well laid. Wait, a chapel? Why is the chapel next to the family room? Shouldn't the chapel be a different building? Then again, what do I know? What am I using anyway? A torch or something? Can I have like, I don't know, a really, really big, massive, massive light? I mean, you know, or can I come back during the day? Why am I here at night? What's the point? I don't fully understand why I'm here. I'm walking through the darkness. Do 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 do. Walking through the darkness through the door I go. It's John. I might be able to force it. Okay then, watch me. One, two, three, honey up. And that is how you successfully take down a door. It also works when you want to beat up enemies. Oh, there's a baby monitor. <gasps> Wait, am I here babysitting someone? If I am, I am doing a terrible job. Where's the baby? What if I already lost the baby? The mother will be really mad at me. I hope I'm not here to babysit. Hello? Is that the baby? I think the baby's talking to me through the baby monitor. My, he's got a really deep, weirdish voice for a baby. But then again, we have to go down there and save him from the bees that were buzzing. Unless, of course, that was just the sound of the baby monitor was making. This game's weird. But, I must find the baby. Hello, little baby? I am here to babysit you. I think. I'm not really sure if that's why I'm here, but I'm here to babysit you regardless, because I got a baby monitor, and I'm guessing I'm supposed to find you. So don't worry, little tyke. I will find you and I will take care of you. Um... Unless I completely lose you. You have to be here somewhere. I will find you. I will find you. I'm not kidding. Oh, there's a letter here. He... He eyes? That is the worst English I've ever seen so far. <gasps> there's the baby monitor next to, uh casket? A coffin? No kidding! It does feel wrong and weird. For one, <gasps> what if the baby got stuck in the casket? Or what if somebody locked me in the coffin? And um, I'm guessing he's still inside the coffin or casket. I've really got to find out first how much I'm getting paid for this, because this is just weird. Now what's going on? Hello? Hello? Your electric bill is terrible. Hello? Anybody here? Oh, you must be the mother. Um, I'm guess... Why is she chasing me? I thought she wanted me here to babysit. Now she's just chasing me around the building. What is wrong with her? I mean, I took time out of my day to come and babysit her little tyke, and then she stops chasing me. How rude. Hmm. <gasps> Unless, of course, she's in league with the hedgehogs or all the other things. What? It could still be possible. I'm still thinking that Sonic is evil or Sonic or whatever the other one is called. The one with the really big teeth that chases you. Either 
of that one being chased by an army of bees. <gasps> what if she's like in disguise and she's actually a giant bee that's trying to kill me? What? It could still be a thing. Anyway, let's go through here. Maybe there was just a misunderstanding. Maybe she thought I was a burglar. Even though I clearly don't look like a burglar, but hey, there's a chance I look like a burglar. I can barely read that red text. I'm sorry, but whoever put the red text there, could you put it in a different color? I can barely read that. What's in here? I probably shouldn't be nosy, but who cares? I need compensation or con I need something for that. Up the stairs I go. Maybe she's calmed down now. The door is still warped. A lot of doors warp around here. Why is the music going weird again? Do I have to go back down here? The little tyke is still stuck in that casket. I guess I have to come out at some point. Oh. Somebody let him out. Never mind then. I don't need to worry about it. Now what? Don't tell me the lady's back again. Look, lady, I'm trying to find your toddler. Calm down. I'm doing my best here. Oh, hello, there you are. Well, excuse me. Wow. She really is angry. It's not my fault. She's the one who lost her toddler in the first place. I'm just here to babysit. At least I think. Unless, of course, she doesn't want me to babysit anymore. And if she doesn't, she could have just told me no. Where am I even going? I can barely see anything. Can anybody out there see anything? I can't see anything at all. I don't even know where I'm going. It's so dark. You know, I should turn this, brighten this up for you guys. I can barely see anything. I can barely. Am I going through a door? Am I going into a church? Why am I opening? Yay! I Myrtle? Her name is Myrtle? So what, is she like moaning Myrtle from Harry Potter or something? So I've got to lock her back in the coffin. But then, why did it sound like a guy was in the coffin if it's actually the woman was in the coffin? I'm confused. Where's the baby? You can't trust anybody nowadays. How do I lock her in? she was in the coffin and now she's screaming because I locked her in well you didn't even pay me lady Ugh. open this door hey what happened hello is it over Wait, where am I even anyway? Why do you mean full systems lockdown? I already locked the crazy lady in the casket. So how am I supposed to get out? Why is there so many locks on the door? What's this? Ever since my first day working here, I felt a little strange. Now, after what happened that day, things seem to be getting even stranger. I'd even go so far as to say creepy. I've been an embalmer for years now, and I'm very passionate about my job. I've always felt comfortable with what I do, so it's pretty unusual that I feel this way. Two of my colleagues have died. I had to embalm them both. However, grief can't explain this feeling. Up until just four days ago, I hadn't even known about the history of this funeral home. I already knew that it was ridiculously old, but what I didn't know was that it allegedly harbors some kind of powerful aura which traps and torments the spirits of people who have died in a state of grief or fear, and have at some point been associated with the building in one way or another. 
These associations apparently include those occurring post-mortem, such as embalmings and funerals. Do you mean to tell me that I'm stuck here because of something you've done? Oh, hello, there's somebody else here. I'm guessing he's looking for the baby as well. But wait, so all these people have already been stuffed? Great! I'm having fun on this one. Why am I here again? And wait, I'm supposed to be a guy? Great! Nobody told me it was a guy. I don't know who you are, but by God, you caused a lot of mess. Seriously, it's worse than if the hedgehogs took over the world. Wait, static? What's going on? I'm not on TV. And great, now the cat's in the room again. Yay, this is going to be fun. Let's just get through this. And then I can find Nora and the others. I can guarantee the cat is going to jump on me any second now. This is going to go great. I'm going to get jump scared or something. Wait for it. Are we playing Slender? Is that where there's loads of letters? Michael? Well, at least it's an original name I can actually say. I knew the cat was going to sit on me. Great. Wonderful. Great. There goes the cat again. Walking all over the laptop. Yesterday was the first time I've ever seen it used, and many of the workers, including myself, were ordered to wait in the family room until the situation was taken care of. No one I've spoken to about it knows why it was done, or at least they won't say. All I know is that these safety glass windows and electronic gates appear to be designed for keeping things in rather than out. That was the first responder that day. It was the first and only person to make it to Myrtle's side before she passed away. She managed to give Sullivan a parting I love you on that baby monitor, but that was the last communication they ever had. Why does she even have a baby monitor? The last thing she ever did was give me that piece of paper. It was a short poem she had written for Sullivan earlier that day. She asked me to give it to him, and I promised her I would. And she slipped away. I guess Sullivan had picked up by Myrtle's weak rasping in the baby monitor that something was happening to her. Because soon after she'd passed, he came running into the hall from the upstairs arrangement room. But he was too late. She was gone. That's when he broke down. I'd never seen him show so much emotion towards Myrtle before. Then, of course, the rest happened. I'll keep my promise, even now. It's all I can do for my dear friends. Great! So, yay. Myrtle and Sullivan. So wait, the other guy I saw was called Sullivan, so Sullivan is running around here now? He's not going to be happy that we locked Myrtle downstairs. But again, where's this baby? Why does she even have a baby monitor? Wouldn't it make more sense to give her a phone or something? Or a recorder? Again, if you hear a bell, that's because I'm babysitting someone's cat and their cat has decided to ring their bell constantly and begin to pain in the butt. There are a lot of strange things I've seen around this place. I'm not allowed to talk For again. Instance, God damn it. a fireplace that isn't even a real fireplace. It's some kind of ladder shaft, but there's a tough metal grate fastened over it that appears to be controlled electronically. Most likely by the lockdown system. I'm assuming the shaft leads down to the basement, but it must have been sealed off because it's not accessible from anywhere down there. Another thing I've started wondering about is a metal handle that's been sitting on Michael's desk for about a month now. I asked about it once out of curiosity, but he avoided giving me a direct answer. He told me it broke off of something. I had already assumed this, seeing as it's covered in dirt and rusted around the edges where it had clearly been attached to something for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest mystery I've encountered here is the place Myrtle always went for privacy. She was often depressed, so she was always going into the downstairs hall on her way to wherever it was she went to be alone. However, she seemed to vanish. The only place she could have gone from that hallway is down into the basement, but I went down there one day to ask her something and I couldn't find her. I'm wondering if there's a secret room somewhere down there. 
After all, I did learn from Michael that this building is from the 1600s, long before it was ever a funeral home. Buildings as old as this one sometimes have quite a few secret areas. Then it's time to go find where she was hiding. This is going to be fun. We're now going on a secret area hunt thingy, my bobby. <laughs> Look. Wow, that was certainly one evil laugh. Though I've heard a lot. Still have <laughs> Sullivan has been lying in his coffin now for two days, and Myrtle for three. Because Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so, considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. As far as feeling nervous around coffins, I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Maybe it's just normal stuff the air. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. I totally go with ghosts! Let's all go on a ghost hunt then! Also, really? You don't believe in that stuff after everything that's happened tonight? You must be joking, right? Unless, of course, <gasps> what well, this guy's already dead and I'm not playing as him. Something weird. Oh, not again. Turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's key card from the office. Mrs. Rains had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. That's just rude! Burying Sullivan with a few of his belongings from the funeral home. I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's keycard. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen. But then again, Mrs. Rains would be the one who would do that. I discovered earlier today that Devin had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered. So there is a kid here. So am I babysitting Devin? If I am, I refuse. He doesn't sound like a really good kid. If I was a little twerp, where would I hide it? Grief-stricken man killed by train after blinding himself. How on earth they never buried both are... Wow, there's something written on the back. Oh, take his rose? So there is a rose here! What's going on now? And great, now the cat's acting like an a... Oh great, is Devin dead? They won't find it. Great. So, what? The kid's dead too, and I have to do it with him? Hello? All those attending the funeral service for Sullivan James, please gather in the visitation room. I didn't know that was still working. <gasps> Does that mean I could just talk on top of like the micro thing, whatever the hell he just used, and goes, Excuse me, and then see my key card? Um, did I suddenly just go Slenderman game? Where am I? Oh, more talking. No, wait. A terrible doodle! Yay! Oh, 
great. Something's gonna happen again. Ooh, dog, scary music. Ooh. And now the cat. Ow! Great, I'm getting tapped by the feeling. Double dare, da I dare you, I dare you, double dare you. For what exactly? Ouch! Oh, excuse me, hold for a moment, guys. Okay, where was I? Sorry about that, I got a tap by the cat. This is the last time I'm taking care of anybody's cat. I don't care which one of them asks me to watch their cat. I'm not watching their cat anymore. Oh, great, a coffin open, great. I wonder who's coming out of this one. Sullivan. Sullivan James was blind as a bat. That's Sullivan so nice of you James to tell him that. Fell down flat. Oh. Sullivan James is withered and blue. He's about Sullivan to rise James up and try to kill you. like him I can barely see anything I don't know okay it's his key card yay again I'm sorry if you can hear the cat I have no choice but to bear with it and so do all of you people out there. I know it's not professional but I can't do anything about her and yeah it kind of just happens. And yes I'm also eating food while I'm playing this playthrough. I know it's not professional but I'm not professional. He's being a really big butt lately, and I'm getting a little to no sleep. Right. Okay. Let's continue on. Loading. Yay. Where am I? I can still barely see anything. Oh, wait. Am I in the mortuary? Is this where they prepare the bodies? Oh, yay. Goody. Now the cat's playing with the ball. Yay. Hopefully you can hurt her. Knowing my luck, you probably will. Slowly I open the doors into the more black and darkness, waiting for the evil army of hedgehogs to jump out. Everyone here is dead. <sighs> killed. 
Ghosts in this house are not like ghosts in other houses. If they're looking for something specific, their corpses actually get up. Someone threw the lockdown switch and I can't get out. I finally found the override key, but I'm not sure exactly where the switch is. Although, I might have an idea. I remember overhearing a conversation Michael was having a few months ago about something which was located underground. I'm confused as to whether or not this underground location is the main basement where Myrtle's coffin is. I went down there a while ago and looked around, but it appears to be mostly a storage space. Maybe I missed it. The basement is extremely dark, even with a flashlight. Maybe I need to go search again more thoroughly. I need to find the switch. My very life depends on it, as do the lives of many future wanderers if this doesn't stop. One of the most unsettling things about this funeral home is that after a while, you start to feel as though it's hanging by a thread and on the verge of collapsing, prevented only by the mysterious force that fills the building. It's such a strange feeling. Maybe I'm not the same skeptic I was before working here, but where is that damn switch? In the deepest part of the house. Thank you, random voiceover person. I don't know who you were, but you will be my guide. You are my Jiminy Cricket for today. Thank you. Oh, great. So the house apparently is against me now. He does not want me to get out. So, remind me again why you took this job. Were you low on money or something? Wait, why am I even here? This is nothing to do with babysitting. This is actually a funeral parlor. Great. And he taxidermied his friends and other corpses art to get him. Why? Because they got nothing better to do with their lives. And apparently, there is a difference between a ghost and another ghost. That's good to know that there's difference in them. At least the girl is locked up in her coffin at the moment, so I don't need to worry about her own. I don't get it. Best doodle explanation ever. I have no clue what that represents. No. My ears! I hate you. I'm glaring so hard right now at you for that. That was uncalled for, unnecessary, and just downright rude. My hearing, and I'll mention the audience's hearing have just gone mixed with you. Ouch! Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out! I need to turn this down, it's too loud, it's hurting my eardrums. Ah, oh, my ears are exploding. on. I'm just gonna like die over here for a while. So if I go quiet, you know why. I think my ears just popped. I actually can't hear a thing. Hello? Great. I actually can't hear myself legit. Wait, static. Oh my god, a slender man. Is everything back to normal? I'm deaf. I can't hear anything. Great. Creator of this game, you do not need to make everything like super loud that it literally bleeds your eardrums. I can hear weird musically like sound doop doop da da doop da da. I think they're having a rock band. I think they're having like a band or something, and they all want to be part of it. Are they done? Oh, the light. Within your eyes. What light in my eyes? There's no light in my eyes in general. I can barely see anything. I'm half deaf. My ears popped. And there's no kid I'm supposed to be babysitting. And apparently this place was haunted the whole time. As you can tell, I didn't know it was haunted. Don't look in his eyes? Does that just say don't look in his eyes? Also again, I'm sorry if the face 
scammy, ricky thingy it lags. I have no control over it. I'm probably doing my personality completely wrong, but I don't care. Not mention I just lost my voice as well. Yay! door opening. I don't know, it sounds like a strangled cat. Wait, is this supposed to be the baby I'm babysitting? anymore because clearly I've deafened myself a few times in this game. Well then, if it's like a bad feeling coming from down there, probably we shouldn't go down there, but we have to go down there anyway because you think that's where the switch is because you don't have a map of this place. Don't worry though, I'm pretty sure there'd be no evil hedgehogs down there, so we should be all perfectly fine except for the fact we might get deafened by the music again. Yay! Also, why is there even a scoreboard up here? I'm not really understanding of that. This is it. Now I know where Myrtle always went for privacy. Now I know where the handle on Michael's desk came from. Devin must have been trapped down here and couldn't get out. It was only a little while after the search when everything went wrong. All I was ever trying to do was keep my promise. I only ever had the best intentions. But I've angered Sullivan. It was a mistake to touch that rose. This might be the last thing I ever write. I've left my notes all throughout this building in hopes that they might help anyone who happened to get trapped here. If that's the case, and you've made it this far, I'm sorry to say that I've probably never made it out. However, I can tell you that I know for a fact the switch is down here. Once I flip it, I will leave the control key behind. If you already have it, then it was moved somehow. Nonetheless, there's one last thing I can give you, and that's a promise. These tunnels are not a dead end. At some point, there's a ladder which will take you back up to the ground floor. I don't know how far down it is, but I know that it's there. I always did feel a very faint draft coming from that fireplace, and sounds always seem to echo down into it. After disabling the system lock, there should be a definite escape path. Oh, this air is stifling. Ever since Myrtle's death, the energy throughout this entire building has been growing more and more negative. My body is starting to ache, and my stomach is becoming unsettled. Now, I'm getting dizzy. This house has been collecting souls for so many years. It needs to be stopped to be torn down. If I never make it out, I'll just be one more soul that's claimed. I guess I do believe in ghosts after all. Oh great, so we might actually run into him now. Wonderful. So, the house is actually claiming ghosties for its own army and evil plans to take over the funeral parlor? I don't know. I can come up with anything better. But at least we know now that we're not Michael. Michael's dead. Unless he really made it out, but if he made it out, this place would have been torn down. But he didn't make it up, so he's dead. Meaning he's down here somewhere. Great, we're gonna run into Michael. Yay! I don't like this already. All I know is something to do with a black rose. I don't know where I'm going. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to an escape hatch we go. Or at least I'm hoping, because I don't know where I'm going. What is going on? Great, my hearing's going again. Is the music really necessary for this? Really? I'm going to die to that song? Are you serious? 
my grapevine moments are going to be me dying and hearing that song. Really? That is the song of choice I'm going to hear as I die. There isn't even a baby here. I don't care. Just let me out. I want to be out of here. This job sucks. I'm never taking a babysitting again. It was another thing they advertised in the newspaper. System locked down. Disabled. Now to get out. Hello? Okay, off I go. I don't know where I'm going. I can barely see anything at all. And I'm pretty sure you guys can't see anything. So yay. Don't worry. It's red. Did I just get hurt? I don't know what's going on. I'll just keep running. Okay, up where I go. Stay determined, folks. We can do this. We're nearly there. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't know what is chasing us, but I'm pretty sure something is chasing us. But whatever, I don't care. Up we go. How long have I got to keep doing this, by the way? What on the earth? There is somebody up there. Did I die? Did I live? What happened? Oh great! The lady is here. Did I die? I guess I died. I think. She's gonna like, probably do a jump scare or something. Or not? Did I win it? I'm so confused. Yay! A lady? We were playing as a lady? Huh? It's over? Confused, but that was pretty good, but I still don't understand. Did we die? Did we live? What? What happened? Anybody out there get what happened? Did we beat the game? Yay! I'm so confused. I'll have to brighten up for you guys to see because I can not see anything at all. Well, that was an interesting game. I better go find the, stri the spiky hedgehogs and try to stop them taking over the world or something. Maybe I should grab Nora next time I play one of these games. Then again, me and my sister, she might like it. Or maybe it's something else. Hmm. So many choices. Or maybe I should get Blanc. Then Blanc would be like, uh, and I'll be like, come on, Blanc, small 